Are we okay, Suzanne? Yes, we're good. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Uh, Commission policy, second reading. Commissioner Colburn, are you prepared for a second reading? And I think we'll uh, take them in the same order as we did yesterday, policies. Okay. Now, Chairman Lint, would you like me to uh, reread what was read yesterday? I have no other uh, proposed changes on policy number P50. Uh, perhaps just the changes. Okay. We'll go through that uh, the changes. What was uh, the committee has talked and what was proposed was going down on the Nevada duck stamp on the Nevada duck stamp on number one, a judging team of five individuals consisting three members of the Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners and two individuals appointed by the sponsoring organization. The two and the appointed by the sponsoring organization as well as the five individuals and the three members are changed. Going on to page number two, number four, no judge will have any interest or contact with any of the entrants at any time prior to the judging. Those were the changes that were proposed, Chairman Lynn. Okay. Does anybody uh, have any questions on these again? Any commissioners? Vice Chairman, the Public Commissioner McBath. Um, uh, thank you, Chairman Lynn. Um, um, while I while I have no problems with uh, uh, this particular commission policy. Uh, in the revisions um, uh, in keeping with uh, I, I have received a number of comments uh, from the cabs uh, uh, as well as uh, I got a phone call this morning from uh, Paul Dixon of the Clark County cab and uh, he reiterated his uh, concerns with uh, uh, with regard to policy 50 51 and 22 um, that the cabs had not had sufficient time to uh, to really look at all the changes and so uh, with with that in mind um, uh, what I'd like to do is propose a motion to uh, table um, uh, policy number 50 uh, and, um, and maybe for efficiency to just make that motion cover policy 50, policy 51, and policy 50, uh, uh, 22. Uh, table these uh, to allow them to go back to the cabs and let them uh, participate in uh, the, the revisions and, and get some comments back from them. I'll second that. I think we're going to bring it out. I'm not going to accept a motion. We're going to bring out the public here. I want to get some public comments on it on first, and then we'll bring it back to the commission for a motion. I'm just opening up for comments now, and I want to bring it back out to the public. Any other commission comments? Let's bring it up to the public for public comments on uh, what we have policy 50 to start with. We had some public comment here. There was several people that um, specifically mentioned 50. One was Rick Furman. Many of these did not mention a specific policy, so only if I see that policy, I'll uh, My name is Rick Furman, for the record, uh, and uh, I'm a, representing myself. I'm affiliated with the Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. But uh, as far as uh, P50, uh, specifically, um, I would oppose the uh, the changes in the selection in the judging committee. Uh, I think that the way that it currently stands includes more of the sportsmen's groups, and uh, uh, I think that's the way it should stand. Oh. Thank you. Did you want comment on all three of them at one time, or what do you uh, what would you like to do? No, I think we do no. each issue separate, please. One at a time? Yes. Okay, well, let's do one at a time. 50 we're talking about right now. And then we had Bob Bruner. For the record, uh, my name is Bob Bruner. Um, I don't recommend changes in this, in this policy. It's worked for years. We haven't had an issue with it. Uh, I think the changes cause a couple of problems. One, we haven't followed due process to get this out to the cabs. Two, I think when you reduce and and close down the group that's selecting you, you open the door to more bribery, corruption, whatever. Uh, again, we're passing this for future future commissions and everything, and I just uh, 
who, who knows who's coming and who's going. So we need to we need to keep that in mind. And the third thing, I think it's an ir irresponsible use of, of funds to have this in the committee and the staff that needs to use in this and the ag the time that needs this is a this is a this is not financial responsible. Thanks. Okay, t t um, we had three individuals who mentioned agenda item 15, but not necessarily 50, and that was Dennis Wilson, Greg Smith, would be the next one after Dennis. For the record, my name is Dennis Wilson. My affiliation is with Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. Um, I would like to voice my opposition to policy number 50. Uh, once again, I think it's very important to include not only commission input, but input uh, from the related groups and from the CABs as it has been done in the past. I see no reason for change, and I am, I am opposed to change on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. And we had uh, Greg Smith followed by Tom Smith. For the record, Greg Smith, uh, representing myself. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, specifically, Commission Policy Number 22. I am not in support of this for many reasons, and I don't. We're know talking about to, Policy 50. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to hear them all. No, we're going to do one okay. at a time. Okay. Well, I, I, I also have issues with 50, with all three of these, to be frank, um, and I would not support this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Tom Smith. I don't know if you want to this item. It says 15. Hi, I'm Tom Smith, just for the record. Uh, my objections really on this are 50 and 51 are tied together, is I think it helps to make the game boards irrelevant. And they get a lot of input from the sportsmen throughout the state of Nevada. And I think that their input on 50 and 51 is important. And I would like to see uh, the judging continued through the game boards as well as through the commission. Thank you. The last one I had specifically for this item would be Judy Karen. Commissioners, Judy Karen, for the record. Um, I just want to say on reiterate um, Commissioner McBeth's motion um, on the deck stamping or the deck stamp procedures. I would really like to ask you all to hold off on that and have that come out of the deck stamp committee first to go back to the board. Um, coming out of a different committee. There's three commissioners serving on that, and I would like to see that come back to the committees and the advisory board, special interest groups. And I also feel the same on um, number 51, just so I don't have to come up again. Thank you. Thank you. That was all the specific ones here. Did you, Tom? Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Thomas Wilson, President of the Nevada Waterfowl Association. Uh, you heard from me yesterday, and I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. I was thinking about my testimony yesterday and some of the questions, and I, I want to be absolutely clear. Uh, and as, as many of you, many of you know, um, my organization, Nevada Waterfowl Association, and myself in particular, have, have always had a very good working relationship with the commission. I would never ever do anything intentionally or even negligently that, negligently that would show disrespect. And, and to the degree that I did, I apologize. That certainly was not my intent. My intent clearly or uh, simply was to suggest that. My organization has got some interesting uh, background on this topic, and we would like to share it with the commission. When you make your decisions on, on what changes need to be made, and, and, and we'd like to do that. Uh, there was some questioning about whether or not I was questioning the open <coughs> meeting law and, and, and the timeline, and I was not at all <coughs> questioning that. Never once did I say that there was, there was any, any problem with the way things are done. Um, but what I am saying is there's really no rush on this particular issue. We just finished the last judging contest. Uh, many of you have already seen it. It's uh, uh, it's the, the spoonie. <laughs> uh, a new a new uh, species hasn't even been picked for the next contest yet. Uh, so we're way early in the game, and, and the Nevada Waterfowl Association I think can be a great asset uh, to this commission in bringing different ideas uh, uh, as to how to improve it or how to change it. And we'd like the opportunity to do that. We don't we don't have a we don't have a rush, and, and we'd like to uh, we'd like to give you the benefit of some of the experience that we have. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Not hearing any more public comment on this. I'll bring it back to commission. Let's go with the next uh, policy on your committee. Okay. Read the changes, I think. Yes. yes. Policy number 51, Mr. Chairman. On number one, 
the proposal there would be three boards of wildlife commissioners on number three and the changes would be the recipient would be selected by a judgment panel made up of three wildlife commissioners one department staff uh, one department staff member and marlene kirch daughter of former commissioner wayne e kirch also two to be changed there on page two the presentation or uh, or another commission meeting agreed to by the recipient and then number seven would be struck out of there all costs for printing and any other administrative costs of the Kirch award are to be paid out of the wildlife commission budget thank you any uh, commissioner comments on this policy before I turn it over to the public hearing none uh, I'll turn it over for public comment on policy 51. The specific ones I had here was, once again, Judy Karen, or did you cover that the first time? I would like to add something to that, please. Um, especially on <coughs> policy 51, it's such a prestigious <coughs> award that my <coughs> personal feelings, I'm still struggling with this, and after leaving yesterday and hearing some of the comments that were made and some of my own, I would much rather see the Kirsch Award this year rather than extending the deadline to January 15th if it had to do with um, time discrepancy of when the committee was set that rather than extend it without having the policies in place and having this going out to the public um, for comment first that this year not have the award get the policies straight postpone the awarding this year if nominations I don't know if nominations have been accepted up to the November 15th deadline but now we have it to January 15th a turnover possibly of how the policy is going to be worded how it's going to be judged my recommendation would be to be postpone the Kirsch award until that's all figured out thank you yeah, Tom Smith will be followed by Greg Smith or Jeff okay Greg Smith do you have anything further okay Dennis Wilson for the record my name is Dennis Wilson my affiliation is Nevada Bighorns Unlimited for those in the audience that weren't here yesterday I was the author of the uh, application for the Kirsch Award winner this year uh, I was very proud of that application I think that uh, by nominating and seeing Mel Belding win that award was just tremendous. Uh, very proud of Mel for his champion efforts for Nevada's wildlife. So my question, which was not answered yesterday that I addressed the board, why the change? I, I don't understand the reason for, the, for this change. Um, I think the beauty of the Kirsch Award, once again, is that it has broad support, not only from the Commission, but from the Department of Wildlife, from the CABs, from wildlife groups, and then, of course, from Marlene Kirsch. Um, by adjusting the uh, proposal here, Policy 51, you're taking out the CABs, you're taking out the wildlife groups. And, and then there is a potential perception of stacking the deck with commission members. I was asked yesterday by Commissioner um, Coburn whether I thought that that would be a problem, and my answer is still no. I don't think so. But my concern is we're taking out the broad base of the, and, and in my opinion, the beauty of, of this award. So I am in opposition to any changes to policy number 51. Thank you. Thank you. We had Rob, Bob Bruner, then followed by Rick Furman. And then after Rick, that was all. For the record, my name is Bob Bruner. I'd like to oppose any changes to 51. Um, again, timeliness of information to the cabs. Uh, this does not. Um, improve the award, make it better, it doesn't do anything. It is a waste of, of money, it is a waste of time, and it is against public support. So again, I do not recommend any changes at this time. Thank you. Thank you. 
For the record, my name is Rick Furman, uh, representing myself and affiliated with the MBU. Um, but for reasons already stated, I would oppose these changes. This is narrowing the scope of the selection uh, for this prestigious award. And um, unless uh, compelling evidence can be given of a problem with the current uh, selection process, then uh, I would certainly be in opposition to the change. Thank you. That was everybody who'd had a specific um, comment on that. Uh, the next policy, Commissioner Coburn. Is you can take any comments from the commission okay. on that one. Let's take comments from the commission on policy 51. Right. Commissioner McBeth. Uh, thank you, Chairman Lent. Um, after hearing all the comments and, and uh, I, I, I think that the way that the Kirch Award should be awarded is to I see three groups we have the Commission we have the department and we have the sportsman's group public and if if the vote was set up to where no one of those groups could control uh, who was going to get the award then truly it becomes a consensus as to who gets this award I'd feel much more comfortable I am not comfortable with three commissioners uh, being allowed to control this vote because what's going to happen is is they're going to there there's going to come back to the commission if uh, if the commission if if we have a situation where the vote is three commissioners you know for a particular person and the two other the department and uh, and the public uh, sportsman uh, uh, rep votes otherwise then then automatically it's going to come back to this commission that we have stacked the deck and that we have uh, you know basically uh, put uh, our uh, interests over those of the uh, of the department and the uh, and the sportsman's groups that's what's going to happen and I don't want to be in that position I would rather it be an equal amount uh, an equal vote from each of these groups and that it truly be a consensus that everybody has come to an agreement as to who should receive this very prestigious award thank you chairman Lent. yes chairman McBeth you're making some assumptions that this would not be objective from the, the commissioners here and uh, you know, I, I would take issue with that. All right. And, and I want to be—I want to be careful. Um, I am not—I am not stating that that there would not be objectivity with the commission. What I am, what I'm, what I'm, my comment goes to the perception that if a vote comes down with three commissioners ap approving a particular person, and um, and the other two uh, groups having a minority. And voting uh, for other other additional, then automatically the perception is going to be that that is what the public is going to look at this commission, and I would rather us not be put in that position. That that is my comment. So please understand that it is not that I don't trust the commission. I just don't want the commission to be placed of having any appearance that we have had um, that we're any cronyism or whatever you want to call it as far as that. Well, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me. Let, me, let me make a comment on that. Commissioner McBeth, I've heard from some people that are nominated before that it's been biased by a certain sportsmen's group that issued the award. So it goes the other way. The wind blows the other way. And it is a commission award. And if you were given an award from your law firm, you'd want, you'd want to do it yourself. And so it is a commission award. And so I think the commission does have a role in doing the award. And I think with Commissioner Coburn, if we can't be unbiased, then we've got a problem within the commission. But I've heard the opposite, that certain sportsmen's group bind together and nominate one person, and there's people that didn't get it that were deserving of it. So it can go both ways. That, and, and I think uh, it's a commission award, and, and we'll, we'll discuss this when I bring it back to the commission for, before we vote on it. And Commissioner Cabrera? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I was going to say the same thing. I, uh, my understanding, we were going to go through each one of these, and then we, we could come back to the Commission for comment. So I don't think it's appropriate to comment at this time. I will have comments in response to what was just said at that time. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one, uh, Commissioner Coburn. Thank you. Chairman Lynn. Commission policy number 22. Proposed changes on page one transplant the act of releasing endemic wildlife species 
the habitat in the word is not currently occupied by the species. That would be a change on page one. Page two will say the same. So there's no proposed changes on that. On page three, number five, which is a completely new line item. Once approved by the commission, any changes in the big game release plan <coughs> must be presented and approved by the Wildlife Commission. Number six, <coughs> the big game release plan must include source population of animals to be released. I would only say on that thing there that I would question the word source as to if we could modify that or perhaps come up with a better idea on that terminology. Number seven, to give transplanted or translocated animals a better chance of establishment, predator control must be accomplished by wildlife services or another appropriate entity before and after any transplants or translocations can occur. So those are three additions, five, six, and seven. Five would then become eight, six would become nine, seven would become 10, eight would become 11. Number 12 on a proposed change has been deleted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Any, uh, we'll turn back. The department has some um, language we'd like to ask the commission to consider. Is this an appropriate time uh, to present that? Let's do the public comment, and then we'll come back. Okay, thank you. Comment. Is that okay? That's fine, thank you. And we might see something that you might want to change your mind on. It might have a different idea of what we could do. I'd hope they'd give us some ideas instead of just opposing. Any public comment on this? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, Ken Wellington, for the record. Um, Elko County on this, uh, of course, opposed this, uh, wanting more time to look it over and discuss it. Uh, concerns, uh, their major concern was the private property, which has been removed. Um, speaking on behalf of myself, I'm all for being proactive on the predator control in areas prior to. However, I, I have some concerns of how, when, where, and when is the burden met and how will we do that? And so I'm kind of concerned about that, you know, if that needs to be in this policy or uh, another section or how that would be covered so that we know that, okay, that burden's been met in order to do the transplant into that area. That would be my personal uh, thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we had um, several people with cards here specifically for this item. One was Greg Smith. Followed by Tom Smith. Thank you. For the record, Greg Smith representing myself. Um, in looking at these changes to the plan, under transplant, the word currently, um, striking previously, um, I think it limits you. How are you going to expand populations in the state when you have habitat and areas that you'd like to utilize that will support expansion of a species in there? You can't do it. You've eliminated that possibility by changing this word. Currently, you can't do it anymore. Um, the next item is item five. I don't believe this should be a policy issue. I think, I think it's an operational issue that would be administered by the department. Um, that's what they do. It just makes sense that you would leave it as it is. Item six. Again, the source population that I believe the commissioner commented on. Um, the exact source is a biological issue that's done yearly, I would think. They go in and evaluate that. That's what the department does. I don't, I don't know how you could possibly legislate, so to speak, that issue. Number seven, analysis is currently done and implemented if necessary. I think they do that. They, they do that currently. They go in and evaluate it. If predator control is needed, they bring it in and do it. I, I think you're really tying your hands by saying that you will go in and whack everything that's just above the line and before and after. It's like, it's kind of overkill, I think. I do believe this would further restrict transplants or eliminate altogether in doing this. 
and it's very expensive. It's got to be expensive to do this. And that has to be an issue for the department. Um, I would support the idea of postponing the action, giving the cabs time to take the sportsmen of the state's opinions. Let's get their opinions first. It seems like they ought to know about it and have a chance to voice their concerns through the cabs. Thank you. Thank you. We have Tom Smith followed by Don Moldy. For the record, my name is Tom Smith. Yesterday I mentioned that I'm very concerned about uh, Lahont and cutthroat trout and possibly salmon reintroduction. And I think this would definitely impact that. It says right on the beginning, uh, stocking is put and take. And I can't think of any other game species we put and take except fish. So I think it certainly affects them. Uh, also, I feel that uh, when it talks about source population, I mentioned yesterday, if we have animals that have been uh, relegated to not being in an area for a long time through habitat destruction, fire, uh, hunt and cutthroat trout, where a lot of the fishery have, has disappeared entirely from, from some of the ranges in Nevada, if without a source population of animals, we can't reintroduce them. I think that would be a big detriment to all the sports in Nevada if we can't reintroduce Lahont and cutthroat trout to our mountain ranges again, where they where they were our native fish, and uh, so I think that's a, a a major problem with this. And number seven, the predator control. Right now, Wildlife Services provides predator control, and at the request of Department of Wildlife, they will go in and uh, take care of predators in a specific area. So I think making it mandatory, <coughs> and with a follow up, is. Uh, is a little redundant and not necessary and especially possibly a budget breaking uh, initiative that we shouldn't be looking at and wildlife service provides a publication that everybody in this room can subscribe to that tells of what their efforts are in the state of Nevada and they do a, a, a tremendous job and I just think by looking at that we'd see that a lot of these predator control majors are not necessary thank you and we have We'll have Don Moldy, followed by Don Alt, and then we'll have a statement to be read here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, Don Moldy, Reno, representing myself. Uh, two quick comments. I uh, agree with those before me who um, wonder about the advisability of the mandatory predator uh, control aspect of this <coughs> uh, proposal. Uh, it seems to me when you get into um, policies and procedures when you make something mandatory change all of the shells or maybes to musts uh, it clearly ties the hands of the agency in terms of flexibility the second thing I, I would simply and I also believe that policy 25 is your predator management policy and I don't see why everything can't be contained in that but just as a as a perspective item I would remind you that at least the last time I looked, a big game species in this state, except for mule deer, are at all time historic highs. And those numbers have been achieved without this predator uh, control aspect in this policy. Thanks. Okay, we had Don Alt, and then we have a statement from Rex Flowers. Rex Flowers would be the fault next one. Okay. Don Alt, uh, representing the Nevada Livestock Association. Uh, as far as uh, doing predator type things, if you people are worried about the costs and what good it would do, all you'd have to do is go out and buy 10 ewes, uh, female sheep that don't have teeth anymore. You can get them for about $20 a piece, put 10 of them out there, come back in 30 days and see how many you got left and you'll know if you have a predator problem. And uh, that's just cowboy logic. And uh, as far as uh, transplanting, uh, the water in these ranges belongs to the ranchers. And if anything is going to be planted on his range allotment, uh, it's a taking of his private property without due compensation. And uh, quite a few years ago when Tony Lesperance, 
who is now at the uh, Department of Agriculture. He was in charge of the gun ranch for the state of Nevada uh, in the Simpson Park range. <coughs> and he ran some cattle over the hill on this other guy's range. And the boy says, you're taking my water and eating my grass. And he uh, sent, him, sent the state a bill for $10 a day per cow for the water. They took it to the state engineer. The state engineer said his water, he can charge whatever he wants for it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we had a statement to be read for um, Rex Flowers. And then we'll go to noon. And then we've got a few other people. Um, okay, we got a few. Bob Bruner will be next after. Um, uh, Rex Flowers uh, uh, caught me in the uh, parking lot uh, this morning uh, and uh, dropped by to uh, indicate that he was not going to be able to meet, uh, make the meeting. Uh, and would like uh, to have this statement read into the record. Um, commissioners, as I will not be able to attend the Saturday portion of the December meeting, I am requesting that item 15 be sent back to the cabs for further public input before any final vote is taken. My reasoning for this is first and foremost, not all boards had an opportunity to review the actual changes being proposed before this meeting, since some boards hold their meetings in advance of most subcommittee meetings. Also, as I stated on Friday, in accordance with policy number one, amended on August 15, 2009, by the current Nevada Board of Wildlife Commissioners under procedures item six, adoption of commission policies, there are to be a minimum of two readings of the proposed policy in public meetings before uh, the commission takes action to it, etc. It is important to note meetings being plural and then with reference to procedure item two, meetings, I interpret meeting to be an event per month, i.e. June, August, November, etc., not per day of each meeting. It is my feeling that to hold a first and a second reading both at one meeting, such as is being done this Friday and Saturday, is not keeping with the spirit of policy one and shows an attempt to circumvent the process and an attempt to eliminate all input by both cabs and the public. I would ask that this matter be read into the minutes. Thank you for your time and consideration in this matter, Rex Flowers. So we had Bob Bruner, followed by Dennis Wilson, and let's give this to Suzanne. Oh. We have a file here. Oh, we got I'm sorry, I had the wrong spot. For the record, my name is Bob Bruner. I do not uh, like to voice my opinion against in making any changes uh, at this time or any time on this. We've had a very successful program. Um, we have we have problems with procedure. Um, we have problems with wording, and I believe we have a problem with uh, with execution. Uh, number seven here says to give transplanted or translocated animals a better chance of establishment. Better control must be accomplished. So again, the way it's written. You know, it, it appears that any time we take stock trout from a from a fishery to any body of water, we have to do predator control before and after. I mean, it just there isn't any benefit to this. Again, where's the benefit? Where is the justification of the cost? Uh, why why are we doing this? And then the third part is um, is the the jurisdiction. Okay, folks do policy, and they do operational ex uh, execution, and you've crossed that line here, I believe, and uh, and I don't for no for no benefit. I don't think there's a benefit to trying to get done what you're doing over what they already do. And then again, it's a, it's a legal line you've crossed there too. So um, again, my opposition to any changes at this time. Thank you. We had Dennis Wilson followed by Rick Furman. For the record, my name is Dennis Wilson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, I am in opposition to any changes to policy number 22. Uh, I'm not going to restate what's already been stated, but I have particular concerns with change number five, change number six, change number seven. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have Rick Furman followed by Judy Karen. For the record, my name is Rick Furman. Um, I see these changes as being a, uh, 
an attempt to micromanage uh, the Department of Wildlife, which I don't think is the uh, responsibility of the commission. So, uh, in addition to the other comments that were have already been made, thank you. Thank you. Judy Karen, followed by Glenn Bunch. Judy Karen, for the record, um, I first want to thank the subcommittee that looked at these and reviewed the three policies. But I have a question today on policy one. Um, of the Board of Wildlife Commissioners to conduct business um, in the matters of the board. And I think Rich, uh, Rex touched on it, but I didn't know that was going to be read. For the procedures, um, number six is the adoption of commission policies, section A, proposed policies, amendments, or requests to repeal policies shall be mailed to the commission, county advisory boards to manage wildlife, and interest groups. When this came up for review at the subcommittee meeting, as I stated yesterday, there was no review wording to any of these policies on the website, so I didn't attend the meeting. I don't remember seeing anything mailed that was discussed at the county advisory board minute, meeting that I attended, and as a special interest group, some of the groups I'm involved in, I didn't see a packet come out with the revised language. So again, I ask from your policies that you postpone taking any action on this. Thank you. We had um, Glenn Bunch followed by uh, Mr. Laughlin. Glenn Bunch, Mineral County uh, Advisory Board. Some things that uh, some of you people might not realize. In Mineral County, we would not have any bighorn sheep had we went with the currently in place because they were re they were introduced to there. There was a belief that they had been there 50, 60 years ago, but there was none present when they introduced them. And now <clears throat> we there's sheep being removed from uh, the lower part of the county and augment and into other herds because they're doing so well. So with that in mind, if we didn't have, if that was in place, we wouldn't have some of the areas that are presently there. And there's a lot of areas also where there's elk. Had there be, had to be elk there currently, <coughs> there would be no elk there. So there's some of these things that really needs to be looked at. Thank you. I got a question then. How, how would, with the change of policy, how would you say that sheep wouldn't be there, one? And two, didn't they plant sheep in Mount Grant, put a fence around them, didn't the lions clean them out on Mount Grant? The, the wording says if they're not there currently, you can't put any there. That, that's where I've got the problem. We've got them now, and it's great. Bring them on. Okay. But had that been in place before, we wouldn't have any there now. That, that's what I'm getting at is, are we stopping some maybe some more augment somewhere? There was also <clears throat> at one time an op a move forward to put elk on Mount Grant. The people come down from the department and they studied it and they said this is a good place, they'll survive. They met with the ranchers in the area and they said, put them up there, we don't have a problem. The department trapped some elk and started them toward Mount Grant. When the new foreman over the mining, uh, the ranching area that is known pretty well in the area, went to Senator Reed and said, we don't want them, we've changed our mind. That load of elk was dropped in, in central Nevada. They were already en route to Mount Grant. So these are some things, you know, they're not there, they didn't want them there. So that's why I'm saying the word currently. Yeah, because put, what they did is they put the, uh, the elk inside, or the sheep inside the fence closure at any time one of the predators needs something to eat. It went and hopped the fence and had mutton. Okay, thank you. There was a, a card here from Mr. Laughlin. I didn't know if you wanted to speak on this or no. Okay. That was all the cards then We're on this item. Oops, that, uh, part of okay. Thank you. Mark will do the presentation and the suggestions. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, uh, my name is Mark Atkinson. I'm the Chief of the Game Division. Um, following yesterday's discussion of Policy 22, um, I met with 
uh, Deputy Attorney General uh, knew. Um, and we, we looked at the language that um, was in the policy and what had been recommended. And um, we tried to craft some language that, um, as uh, Dag New indicated, was more consistent with the, with the Commission's role in developing broad policy to guide the Department. Um, before I, I talk about the specific components, I'd just like to hand out the proposed language to you. We felt it was important to, to clarify one thing as well. In the uh, suggested changes that came from the committee, uh, the word translocation was used several times, um, but does not appear in the definitions. And in fact, the word transplant um, is traditionally used by ENDOW um, and a number of agencies. However, from a biological perspective, probably the more appropriate term to use is translocate. Um, and in fact, uh, the, the previous definition um, of transplant just referred to the act of releasing animals. And that is, um, that's not correct. Uh, so the, what, what we'd like to recommend is, is considering um, some additional language there to clarify uh, the meaning of transplant and translocate, which is the act of capturing, transporting, and releasing endemic wildlife species from one location to another for the purpose or intent of creating self-sustaining populations. That would be our recommendation under definitions. Um, on page three, uh, with new item five, um, we don't have any recommended changes to that. New item six, we would like to add the word potential to source populations. Um, as has been discussed yesterday and today, um, it's not possible for us to identify source populations long in advance um, uh, of these operations. Uh, we work um, consistently right up to the time of captures and translocations, um, determining which populations um, will benefit from being thinned out, um, essentially. We have some, some significant issues with uh, uh, very successful uh, populations in some areas and we have concerns about uh, density issues, density related disease issues and um, it is not until we identify those density uh, situations that we're able to, to specify which are the source populations. Um, on item number seven our suggested language would be to give translocated animals a better chance of establishment. When Endow determines the need for predator control, it may be accomplished by wildlife services or another appropriate entity before and after any transplants. Thanks. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, Chairman Lynch, uh, a question. You have something to read? Go ahead. Um, Thank you, Chairman Lynn. Um, with regard to five, um, do you anticipate there being any problems with the, using the word any changes uh, without having um, maybe a qualifier like any material changes? Because I, I think you can get into a situation where, you know, even little minor changes, are you going to be at now asking yourself that, that it comes back to the commission? Uh, it just seems to me that uh, maybe we ought to think about using the word any, um, maybe any material changes or any, I, I don't know. Uh, substantial. Sub yeah, substantial changes any. because I, I can see us, you know, somebody latching on to this with even the m most minor change, and I don't think that would be the intent. Ken Mayor, for, the, for the record, Director Vendow, uh, I think Mr. Stockton actually wrote a letter here recently that clarified what that would mean. It, and I think the example in your letter was that if wolves were not part of the capture plan, yet we wanted to release wolves, 
that would be a, a change, not an administrative operational kind of change. It would be something significant. If we hadn't didn't have elk in the plan, we wanted to el add elk to the plan, then we would have come back and then asked the commission for uh, authority. But we wouldn't come back for little operational changes. That and that's one of the reasons on the 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 potential source population is a game day decision. You know, we may have targeted a, a source population. Now all of a sudden it's having a disease issue. Um, we can't predict that up, up to the moment. So those are the kinds of changes that need to happen operationally that, you know, we wouldn't wouldn't be able to bring back, nor would we. Did I, did I state that correctly, Mr. Stockton? You did, and from a legal perspective, I would agree with adding the word material in there. I think that would be a good change. Good change. Mark, um, the wording in number seven, when end out a term is need for predator control. Uh, if you look at the minutes, when Cox talked to us in Vegas, he said they don't believe in predator control, and he said they put the animals out there and let them go where they go and let the predators chase them, and then they see where they end up. It's in the minutes, and so, you know, we get the feeling that you're, the game viewer doesn't believe in predator control from his testimony, and if you look at the minutes, it relays some of that. They don't do predator control before they release, and past history has shown that in Thule Mountain, uh, they took all the all the sheep out. They did it again, and now all the sheep are standing on the road by Sand Pass. They're afraid to go back up the mountain. So, in the past, I don't think the bureau has established a very good positive for predator control. And then the then you say that when end out determines a need, and when is that? I we get the feeling there there's never a need for that. Well, thanks for the comment. Um, I'm sure all of you read the big game release plan that was presented as an informational item in Las Vegas, and you would have seen there multiple uh, recommended releases that um, suggested that there could be a predation issue and that we recommended uh, predation management in those areas. We consistently work with wildlife services to try and identify those areas that we believe uh, need predation management and I'm sure wildlife services would be able to uh, to confirm that with okay. with you so I, I don't believe that's a true statement okay uh, uh, mr. chairman also what mr. Cox said was that uh, the best uh, we, we we would release animals in location X and then they move and it's, it's a little so if you did all the predator work Right where you thought. If, 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 we, if we thought we had a predator issue, first of all, we would do the predator work. But we didn't think we had a predator issue. Let's find out where those elk, or those uh, sheep, for instance, would settle. And if it appeared that there was a, a predator issue, we've got money through the predator program to be able to go take care of the situation. So it's a matter of being expeditious in the way we spend our money and our resources. And and and, and again, I go back to the notion that that uh, we have a wildly successful program uh, currently the way we're doing it. And I, and I hate to see us trying to. You know, uh, tie our hands. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll close the public comment on this policy then, bring bring it back to the commission, and let's uh, let's just start with uh, policy 50, and uh, see if the commissioners have any. Yes, uh, Chairman Lynn. Uh, I do have a recommendation of policy 50 as being the uh, committee chairman here. Uh, after talking with Mr. Thomas Wilson uh, and uh, hearing Mr. Dennis Wilson, okay, and hearing the rest of the public, uh, I want want them to know that it is the committee and the board's um, idea that your ideas are valuable and that we listen to them. And it would be my recommendation as a committee chairman that we table this. Um, until we can have further discussion on this duck stamp issue and proceed from there. Let's uh, ask for Commissioner comments on that. Commissioner Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, I just, being a part of the duck stamp committee, I just wanted to insert a couple comments here that maybe could be looked at when you guys do meet to review this. Um, I don't have a problem with there being seven people there to judge. I mean, it went really smoothly and worked really well. The only issue I have that I would like to see is I'd like to see it where we have an opportunity for the commissioners that are on this to have an opportunity to work with the group to set the date. Because what happened is we got set with a date and 
Commissioner Macbeth had an opening of his elk tag that weekend. I was still hunting on a deer tag that weekend. And I came with Tom in order to do this so that he could have his opening weekend of his elk tag. And had we had a chance to discuss potential dates, that maybe all could have been avoided. But, I mean, I don't know the timeline of how it works, but that was how I felt being on this committee is I had no input as to when the when the meeting was and when you do that to people it kind of there's other plans that are already in the works and it's hard to make it work and that that would be my only issue with this policy and the three commissioners on the on the uh, committee I think is a good idea that way if you do have one person that can't do it you still have two that have a chance to attend so I, I, I would agree with maybe the three members of the board but I don't think we need to drop the number down I don't see any issue with that I mean you're you cut you the only thing you cut were the people that were the volunteers so that, that's my opinion on I, that. I agree uh, not this last one but the year before when I got a call from staff and they says can you be a judge and I said no and Commissioner Cavan could make it it was on a Wednesday and they scheduled without telling any commissioners and so I got a hold of Commissioner Cavan and he could only make it on a Friday and so they changed the judging so at least we could have a commission there was on a Friday there was no coordination between they just said this is a date and we didn't and the commissioners that I appointed to that couldn't make it and uh, we had a problem at Commissioner Cavan and then this year we had Commissioner Macbeth couldn't make it and I would like to see three commissioners on there and and I'd like to see all three commission participate because it is a great great program and the other thing I, I, I like that the committee presented was about the judges you know they have they disclose any pecuniary interest they have in the judging because any judging like that when there's, there's a lot of money to be made by the artists like even Miss America the judges say I do not know them etc so it's a <coughs> nice to have that so the judges that declare their independence from any of the artists just in case something came down because the again the artist is making money on here and I think that was a nice thing that was added to it and as far as the judges and that uh, you know I but I did appoint three commissioners because I thought three commissioners was 